Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Monday, January the 27th. The year is 2020. And let's talk trading. Incremental improvement. You know, you don't usually see big wins in a short amount of time. That's not, or, or big improvement in a short amount of time. That's not the way it happens. You know, in the gym, you go in there and, you know, you put in the time and then maybe three months, six months down the road, you look in the mirror and it's like, whoa, where'd those come from? You know, well, the same is true in trading. You start out and it's difficult and you start learning things. And then maybe three, six months, a year down the road, it's like, whoa, this isn't that difficult after all you know and as far as your account growing you know so long as you keep your risk management in place and you don't lose any more on any one particular trade than you're willing to lose you don't exceed that risk you know maybe at first you know it starts out slowly you're just making a few pips here and there and then suddenly you notice after a few months hey you know my account's gone up a bunch. So don't be frustrated if it take if things look like it's taken a while. Because if you just look around in nature, you look around in life, you'll see that most things that look like it was a big gain all at once actually took time. So be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with your market. Be patient with your trades. It's, you know, it's really not that difficult. But remember, fellow traders, boys and girls, these videos are for educational purposes only. And your results may differ from mine. And that trading is very, very risky and you can lose all your money. And because of that, if you're seeking trading advice, investment advice, financial advice, seek it from an accredited financial professional, you know, somebody that has a certificate mounted in a gla behind glass and hanging on the wall showing that they are an accredited financial professional. So when you take their advice and you lose your money, you know you got your advice from an accredited financial professional rather than some guy with a funny name making YouTube videos or reading about some method or system or indicator on a trading form or something you got in your inbox and in your email. Okay, disclaimer out of the way. Let's move on. Hmm. The, uh, so far, the dollar yen has not filled the gap, and we've got plenty of gaps that need to be filled here. So... You still have a chance to get in on these weekly gaps. You see here, this is the, the open. This is the week's close. There's a big gap. It hasn't filled. And you can see it again right here. That gap hasn't filled. And we're only 27 pips above the uh, yearly open right now. And let's just bring up the euro for the euro traders. You can see here, we're down for the day, 14 pips below that daily open and the, also the weekly open. And you see we're 194 pips below the yearly open, which is also the monthly open this month. And for the new beast trader out there, I haven't forgotten you either. But if you look here, see this bar here, this big green bar? Remember I had, let me put that back. Remember I said you might want to look for price to return to this level. Well, um, you know, it's no crystal ball, but I just noticed that when you see these big candles, price takes time. Now, you know, this was way back in December. We're almost, you know, in the February here, but price did return to that level. You see this big green candle here? Well, same thing happened. So, that's just something to look for. Okay. The uh, pound New Zealand. There's this big red candle. Maybe price gets back to here. 
you can see we're 56 pips off the daily high and 131 pips off the daily low. A lot of movement. You know, there's been some talk about, and I mentioned, you know, you got to be careful of spread in here. You know, you're going to have to make up about four pips of spread, but with this kind of range, you should be able to do that. But then again, remember, your results may differ from mine. Okay, we dipped into the uh, opening range of the month, that first day of the month range right here. We dropped all the way down to the open and bounced. And so now we're just a couple of pips above that first day of the month's high. Actually, it looks like about 14 pips at the moment. The buy zone, as you can see, we've just been oscillating around here, not really doing much, but we seem to be staying above the uh, weekly open here. And for the month, range is 263, average 302, so maybe it'll push out. We are below that weekly inside bar line, way below the daily, but above the monthly, so no inside bar trades there. But you can see we do have a few pairs that have some inside bar action. The euro um, inside that bar, the monthly inside bar two months ago. Let's see. The uh, pound New Zealand is above the daily and below the weekly and monthly inside bar levels. Range for the day, looking here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and somebody wanted to know about this column here, because I usually never talk about it, the Fibonacci. Uh, this is the um, position relative to the current day. So right now, the if you take look at the difference between the high and the low, we're at the 64% level. Just another reading on price as in as terms of percentages rather than just pips. And this is high minus the open, open minus the low. So you can see if you were trading from the open, the potential of making pips. As you can see here, we are just oscillating once again. Not, it's not really going any place fast. And you can see it on the buy zone. Haven't hit that pivot. And in all likelihood, it will be a missed pivot for the day. Still not enough range for the rat. But I do believe the, uh, the new beast, the pound New Zealand, shows enough range and some traders are still asking you know what method do i trade and the thing is it's all horizontal lines i might look at a chart and go hey you know it's in the rat zone and it's cutting through wicks so it's not like for me it's not like it's one method it's more of looking at looking at the same thing different ways and saying yeah i see an opportunity uh to make money so for here pound new zealand you see it was in that upper rat zone failed to make a higher high here started fell out of these wicks right here indicating short in the uh, upper rat zone and you can see it pulled out and there was profit to be made so one thing trading the new beast Let's say, you know, you've overcome a four pip spread and say you're up six pips, seven, eight pips. You know, it's time maybe to start thinking about taking profit or moving your stop loss uh, up because you don't want it to uh, run against you because it can run 10 or 20 pips. No problem. And turn around and run the other way. So trading uh, the pound New Zealand to me is like trading or like playing a video game it's all reaction you just take what you what you see what you can get and be happy waiting for the chart to refresh here on dollar yen looking at the pivot levels 
Not sure why it's taking so long. There we go. There's the weekly pivot here. Monthly pivot down here. And the daily pivot was right here. So as you can see, it looks like we're not going to hit that pivot in the next couple of hours unless something happens. We've got a missed pivot here, missed pivot here, and a missed pivot here. And if you take a look at the week, remember 36 here, if we look at the week, we got a 55, so, and we've got this gap that needs to be filled. So I'm looking for, I have a long bias on the yen at the moment, based on statistics. But remember, your results may differ from mine. And even with only uh, a small range here, there's still enough movement off of that open, where it opened right here, between 80 and 90, that it moves. And now it's between 90 and zero. It's not going to stay in there, I don't think. It's going to either go up or down. It will, and you can see here, it just won't stay between those two lines. Haven't even entered the wick zone. Once again, not near any of the uh, horizontal lines. I like to trade through the uh, Einstein line. You can see here, price was just cutting across it, and it's been from a while ago. I think that was actually from when I made the chart last night. So I just left the line there. As far at the tick level, you can see we're only moving about two or three ticks. Nothing spectacular. As far as the ATR, we hit the halfway point and reversed. So that's something I pretty much tell, tell you about every day. Um, about looking to uh, reverse or take profit at the uh, open plus half the ATR range. Okay, lower low on daily, lower low on weekly, on the euro, lower low on the daily, lower low on the weekly, lower low on the monthly, one dollar yen and the new beast. We have a higher high on the daily and a higher high on the weekly. You can see that right there. And just once again, using the wicks, you can see here. Price went through that upper wick through these two upper wicks, but then as it started to come back down, it was telling you, hey, it was time to take some profit off the table. Now, just using those wicks, those levels, those highs and lows, and tops and candle, tops and bottoms, can uh, definitely uh, be profitable, so long as you're not trying to make huge gains and you're happy with incremental gains. And as far as the high-low lines, you can see here, yeah, it hasn't done anything in the last couple of bars. So, you know, looking at how many bars ago these numbers are, you can see three bars hasn't, one bar ago hasn't been taken out, two bars ago, three bars ago, and five bars ago hasn't been taken out. So price is kind of stuck between this level, in fact, some people would call this a master candle. So there you go, boys and girls, fellow traders. Once again, you can incrementally just go out there and make your profit. Don't try and get it all at once. Because remember, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks.